he opened their eyes. And um, and I was I was thinking about how that um, in Jesus' life he was always opening up his disciples' eyes. He was always looking to teach them something. He was always teaching them something. In every area of their life, he was teaching them something while he was alive. And uh, and you can see back even when he was a boy, you can go back in the, the scriptures even when he was a boy. The Bible says they found him teaching in the synagogue. And uh, his mother was looking everywhere. And uh, I can just see the mother saying, young man, where was you at? And, uh, and Jesus was saying, I'm, I'm about to follow the business. You know, and he was teaching, he was teaching uh, the people, even when he was a young boy, while he was a carpenter, while he was a carpenter, he was teaching the young boy. And then we see uh, in the scriptures that he was teaching them. And every time they asked him a question, he always answered their question. When we pray to God, he always answers our prayer. It may be in a different way, but he answers. He'll take, he'll take uh, nothing and he'll make something out of it. You know, and uh, when you think you got nothing, you got more than what you think you got. He'll always make a way for it seems to be no way. We, uh, we find in the scriptures that uh, the disciples asked Jesus in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 in verse, uh, in verse 3. The Bible says in verse 3, and as, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him proudly, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world? Somebody say, of the end of the world. The end of the world. Now, they were, they were uh, wondering when the end of the world was going to be. What, uh, what was coming up? What's going to happen? And uh, Jesus didn't hesitate. He went ahead and he told them exactly what was going to happen in the next few verses. And a lot of us have read this and, until we're blue in the face and we know this. But, uh, you know, we need to understand that whenever a preacher is preaching, he's either reminding you of something that you already know or he's telling you something that you need to know. Or he's telling you or uh, teaching you something new. And... Uh, so uh, sometimes it's good for us to go back and remind ourselves of what Jesus said. The Bible says in verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, That ye that no man to save you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war, seeing that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. That, that, don't, that don't mean it may be. Maybe it's going to come to pass. It means it must come to pass. It's going to come to pass, brother. Don't they never be to every eye is going to see him that's going to confess? Yes. So if they don't hear the trumpet or they don't see him take off the cloud, why would they say to Jesus? I don't know if they see somebody, but they say when it's a Bible, they don't hear the trumpet. You'll see him stand on the cloud. Well, you, you think about it. How, how is these preachers and people deceiving people today? You, you, uh, you just got to read the scriptures and then the scriptures will tell you how, they, how it's going to be done. It says here, in, uh, for many shall, uh, uh, it says, take heed that no man deceive me. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive me. And ye shall, bear, and ye shall uh, hear wars and rivers of war. See that you be not troubled. Don't be troubled, Lord. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. And all of these are the beginning of sorrow. We are we are already we're already have experienced this. You can hear what's going on today. You got uh, you got preachers that's in church today and saying as long as you're saved, you can go out here and live any way you want to live and be all right. And they're saying you can, as long as you're saved, as long as, and 
you know, you can die drunk and still go to heaven. That's, that's, and you got preachers right now telling uh, their, their people, as long as you got that car filled out, you're saved. You're all right. Let me tell you something. There was a man that got up here uh, Sunday night, and he said he grew up in a denomination, in a, in a church that told him just because he'd been baptized and just because uh, he filled out a piece of paper that he was saved. I'm going to tell you something. If somebody tells you that you're saved, you ain't saved. The only way you can be saved is if you have an experience with God. I remember back whenever I was a young boy, we had a great revival and it broke out in a 14-week revival. And for 14 weeks, Brother Green, we went to church every night. And the church was full every night. The beer joints and the dance halls and everything was shut down. I mean, everybody was coming to that revival. And I was eight years old. And uh, I gave my heart to the Lord in, in that revival. I was eight years old. I was saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost at eight years old. I was speaking with another tongue at eight years old. And uh, whenever I grew up, I got with the wrong crowd and ended up uh, falling away. I, I, I didn't really what you call falling away, but I, I just wasn't doing what I should have been doing. And, and I was, I did backslide. And, uh, and I, was, I was doing things that I shouldn't have done. But when, when I came to myself, I have a problem, son. I came to myself, I came to the Lord. He opened His arms up to me and He gave me a brand new start. But do you know what? Even though uh, I had two experiences with God, one at eight years old and one uh, whenever I came back to the Lord, and I have I, I replayed both both of them experiences. Whenever uh, I know that that experience that I had as an eight-year-old boy was real, it was a real experience with God, and I know that, <coughs> and uh, I know that revival started out on prayer, and. The only way God's going to open up our eyes in the church world today is through prayer. You know, I discovered that, uh, you know, when the World Trade Center came falling down, did you know that around the World Trade Center uh, that they had other buildings that fell down with the World Trade Center? And I'm talking about metal, big metal buildings that were supposed to withstand any kind of weather. But did you know that, uh, that all them buildings was destroyed and they came tumbling down and, and hundreds and thousands of people were uh, were killed but there was a little cobblestone church that was right there at the corner stall of the at, at the trade center and did you know that that corner uh, that church is still there do you know that the big building did not destroy that church do you know why because when the government came together they had a prayer meeting in that cobblestone church and uh, George Washington, and, and they got a monument right there at that Cobblestone Church right now. And uh, they got a, a monument there. And George Washington prayed that God would bless the United States of America. That God would bless them. Uh, and if we fall away, that God's blessing. And he, he made a statement. If we fall away, if the Americans fall away from God, that the blessings of God would be lifted off of the United States of America. And you know, ever since 9-11, the World Trade Centers came tumbling down, and these other big massive buildings came tumbling down, and there was one sycamore tree that was there, there and it came down and, and it went in front of that church, that small church, and it protected that church from all of the terror that came its way. And that little church is still standing there. And do you know that they've been trying to get government funded uh, Brother Green to redo that church, but uh, they hadn't got the government funded yet. But the government, our government, has uh, approved for them to put a mosque right, right there, pretty close to the World Trade Center. But they won't let us put a cross up, and they won't let us redo our little church. That they came, our founders that came to this uh, came to this country went to that place. Our first president, George Washington went to that place, and they prayed and had a prayer meeting, and out of that prayer meeting came the success of the United States of America. You look at all how we are, uh, even, we're in a recession, and look how we're still blessed in a recession. We're still
still believe it. But here they were, and they prayed, and, and, and America started out, and the success of America started out on prayer. God's opened up our eyes if we will pray and believe Him that He will take care of us even in the time of sorrow. He says, I will take care of you even in the time of sorrow. It goes on, He says, then shall they uh, deliver you up to be, uh, to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall, and shall hate you for all and shall hate you and shall hate you be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. That's what's going on today. Some people say, well, my prayers ain't getting there. And uh, some people say, well, uh, I tried that and it didn't work for me. And, uh, and, and, they're, and they're being offended. You know, uh, whenever we started this war, you could turn on the uh, internet, and you could turn on the internet, Brother Green, and you could find them beheading people on the internet just because they were Americans. Just because they were standing for what was right. And it didn't matter if you was an American or not, if you was fighting with the Americans, if you were uh, British or, or whoever you were, if you're, fight, if you're fighting in that war and you're on the wrong side, they're going to behead you and if they and if they got a hold of you they did behead you and they're still doing things over there today and they're right now they're offering people up they're delivering them up to be afflicted and they're killing them and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake you can get up and speak the name of Jesus right now right now and almost they'll almost take you to court on I was thinking today I thought what would happen to the world if everybody turned into homosexuals Well, we would we, we all die out and be extinct. But we, we, we would be annihilated, wouldn't we? See, God don't. See, God didn't make Adam and Eve. Or, I mean, Adam and Steve, He made Adam and Eve. He, he wanted us to multiply. God wants us to multiply. God does not want a man being with a man and a woman being with a woman because there's no multiplication there. Amen. God wants us to multiply. God don't want us uh, to to uh, go through poverty, he don't want us to have to. Uh, he don't want us to have to uh, take and, and and struggle for the rest of our lives. God don't want you to have to struggle for your the rest of your life. We just got to believe that God can do the impossible. Amen. So what we need to do here at the Smarter Church of God, before we leave here tonight, we're going to pray. We're going to pray that God's going to do the impossible, and we're going to do what the Bible said. The Bible says that there will be many that is offended. How many? I, I, I mean, how many families are offended at one another today? I, I know this one particular man, uh, him and his brother, they had two stations in Hartford, Tennessee. One was uh, one was down on the other side of town, and they just on each side of, side of town, they had a service station. And one of them, they started out together, and they got mad at one another, and the other one went down the other end of town over his station. But for thirty something years, they run their own stations and they didn't even talk to one another because they got offended with one another with with uh, different things. And, and right now, people are being offended with one another. Even in church, they get a, yeah, somebody will get offended of you in church, and they'll go somewhere else and they'll run you down and talk you down and, and talk about you like you're a dog. But I'm going to tell you, that's going on even today. It says many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And that's happening today. Just turn on the television. Now, I'm not saying, I mean, there's some great uh, preachers on, on television. There's some great men of God out there. And God's doing a great thing with it. But uh, also we need to realize that there's uh, people out there that's teaching everything. Doctrines of devil. And you just can't listen to everything. And everybody's saying. And it says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And that's that's exactly where we're at today. But he that endeareth unto the end, the same shall be saved. So what we have to do is we have to do the endearing thing. We gotta have endearance. We gotta we gotta be in a place in, in mind that we're endearing God and what God wants us to do. 
we got to be what God wants us to be. And when a challenge comes our way, you know, I was preaching on uh, uh, facing challenges and winning uh, Sunday morning. When a challenge comes our way, you know what a challenge, it, whatever it is your challenge is, you know why it's a challenge to you? Because most of the time, if you don't watch it, you're fearing of failure. What does people fear today? Mostly failure. They, they don't want to fail. Everybody wants to succeed. But what we have to realize and understand, if we're facing something and we fail in it, it is because God wants us to learn a lesson in it. It is because God, you know, even if, if you become a failure in something, uh, it, my uncle said there's no failures in the kingdom. He says if you try to do something, and all of a sudden it don't work out like you think it ought to. He said, just get up and recharge again. That's what we need to learn. Uh, people that in here get up and they keep on praying. They keep on testifying. They keep on believing. They keep on doing what God told them to do. They don't stop. They don't complain. They get up and they do what God tells them to do. Well, look at Brother Drake. He's been up day and night for two days. But he's here to church. He ain't complaining. I know. I know. It, it, it's hard sometimes when we lose sleep, and it's hard sometimes when we got to go uh, do the things that we don't want to do. But uh, but he's still in there. That encourages me. He's still in there. Uh, you're still in there. You're here tonight. That encourages me. So what we have to do is in the kingdom of God, we got to be people of endurance. We've got to endure. And tonight, the Lord uh, spoke to me plainly, and I've got to obey His voice. I want to preach, and I want to teach tonight, and I want to get in deep in whatever I'm talking about. But He has plainly spoke to me tonight. He said, I want prayer in the house. I want the people to come together, and I want prayer in the house. And before we leave here tonight, we're going to have prayer in the house. We're going to pray that God will help us in our, in our time because whether you believe it or not, Jesus was opening up their eyes at this particular time. And He was telling them, we got to be a people of endurance. we got to be able to endure. You, know, you cannot even be saved if you cannot endure. See? And what we need to understand is God's going to save us just like He saved that little cobblestone church in the midst of all that turmoil. In the midst of all that turmoil, that little church is still there. And the cornerstone of, uh, uh, of our first president is still there. And they went to Washington. They, listen, they, they went to New York City. And after they got the government together, and they got down and they had a prayer meeting. Our government, our leaders. That's amazing to me. When you pull up to school this morning, I pulled up at the schoolhouse. And they were standing at the flag and they were praying. That's amazing to me how all the people were praying. But do you know what? The school teachers couldn't pray because it's a government. They're government in law. Now what's, what's going on here? That's why the World Trade Center is coming down. That's why we have poverty in the United States of America now. You know what? The American people has gotten comfortable and they're not I mean, church, we got to get back to prayer. we got to believe God. And when things don't go right, we can't just blame God for it and say, Lord, why didn't you let that happen? <laughs> say, Lord, and this is what I say, Lord, I don't understand why it happened, but I understand that you're going to help me through this mess. Even if I make the mess, He's going to help me through it because He's our God. He's not going to let us down, church. We need to understand that. He told them, but he that endeared unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Wow. And then shall the end come. That's what Jesus told them. He went on, and he, he went on, and he talked about the scriptures. He went on. And in the next verse he says, And when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, uh, whoso readeth, 
Let him understand. This is it. This is this is this is the beginning of it. This is what's going to happen. The beginning of that tribulation is coming. There's a tribulation that's coming upon this world that the world has never seen. If, we, if you'll read the rest of that chapter, you'll find out that Jesus told them that there's a tribulation coming that the world has never seen before. And you'll also go on into that chapter in verse 36 and you'll see that uh, there's no man that knows the day or the hour that Jesus is coming, but we better be ready like Noah was. When Noah built the ark, he preached every day. Some Bible scholar says he preached for 120 years. Some Bible scholar says, uh, you know, they say different things. They say, you know, that he built the, the ark uh, out of shittle wood and, and, uh, or, or, uh, or different kinds of, uh, had different kinds of material. I know that it was gopher wood, but, but we, uh, they, this gopher wood, it's some kind of like a wood. It, it, it don't, it don't rot. It's a, it's a, it's a wood that, uh, and, and it, they don't have woods over there like we have here. The forest, they, it, it was in patches and they had to go out and find it. But to lay all that aside, we need to understand that every day of Noah's life, he still preached until the flood came. The Bible says, he says uh, in verse 37, But of the days and the hours, no, no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. The Father only knows. The Father only knows. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's what it says. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that all that, that Noah entered into the ark and knew it not until the flood came and took them all away. So also, so also is the coming of the Son of Man. He goes on and he says, and he tells us what's going to happen. He, you know, then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. This is what's going to happen. In the in the coming of the in the rapture of the church, there's going to be some taken and some left. Do you know the people that's going to be taken are people that uh, get up and and go to church, and uh, people that get up and want to know God personally. I don't know about you, but I don't just want to come to church. I I want to have an experience with God. I've been I've been praying that God would send us some people around right here that loves Him just as much as I. Listen, church. I I want to see the miracles of God. I want to see the goodness of God. But more than anything, I want to see a people that will come to church and pray and seek God and, and know that they're going to see a move of God before that church service is over. Amen. We should never get in our car and regret to go to church. If you get in your car and regret that you'll go to church, you might as well go back home because you ain't going to do yourself or that church any good. If, you, if you're regretting to go to church, you ain't got the relationship with God like you were having. Everybody should want to go to church. I hunger for church. I hunger to go to church and learn more about God. I hunger to spend time with Him all day. I hunger to spend time with Him at night time. I hunger to, to hear His voice. That's what we need to do as a, as a church people. We need to hunger to hear His voice and know that, that whenever we spend time with Him and read His Word, we begin to hear His voice. His voice says, and He was telling His disciples, listen, this is the things that's going to happen. These are the things that's going to happen. We find here in verse, uh, in verse drop back to verse 23. It says, If any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or, or there. Believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch, if it be, were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I don't know about you, but what, what would you do? What would you do if I'm here in this church and I'm teaching you the Word of God, and I'm telling you what the Word of God says, and I'm telling you that God says to end 
here and I'm teaching a message to you that sometimes you're going to go through afflictions and sometimes you're going to have troubles and trials and then right down the road here comes another man comes in and he's teaching every wind of doctrine and all of a sudden there's great miracles working there and you're thinking well that must be a God because somebody's being healed. See, I try the fruit. I search you out while I'm talking to you, while I'm ministering to you. I search you out. That is what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to try the Spirit to see if they be of God or not. And church, uh, if I get up here and work a miracle, if I get up here and I pray for you and a miracle takes place, are you going to say I'm a man of God just because I worked a miracle? Well, you are. If, 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 if you're going to go on them deal basis, do you know that you can be deceived? We need, we, need to, we need to understand that uh, these false Christs and these false prophets, they're going to come our way. And I believe in miracles just like anybody else. I was born deaf and dumb. I could not hear or talk. And at four years old, God opened up my ears and He healed me. And in my ministry, I have seen many, 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 many people healed. I've seen the blinded eyes open. I've seen the deaf ears open. I've seen legs grow. I've seen people while I was preaching jump up out of the wheelchairs and run. You know what? But that don't move me. You know what moves me? Well, I'll tell you what moves me. My name is written in the Lamb of the Amen. Amen. I'm not going to get confused. I'm not going to let the, the benefits of God rule you know, overrule what my relationship with God. So, what we have to do is we have to learn that uh, there's people coming with great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they say, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. No, not for Behold, he is in the secret chamber. Believe it not. He says, but here's what you look for, men of God. He says, when I come, here's what it's going to be like. In verse 20, 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. He says, I'm not coming in a secret chamber. I'm not coming and, and dwelling in a desert. I'm not going to come secretly. When I come, everybody's going to know it. When I, when I actually come up out of heaven and I come to earth, everybody's going to know it. Every eye's going to see it. Hallelujah. It says, uh, he goes on, he says, for wheresoever the carcass is, there shall the eagles be gathered together. And immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun uh, be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Listen to this. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That means, that, that means to tell me that He's going to shake the powers of heaven. The very creation that He created. It's going, to be, it's going to tremble in His presence. Wow. The sun is not going to give its light. The moon is not going to give its light. The stars are going to fall from the heavens. I believe they're going to bow to Him. Hallelujah. And the powers of heaven is going to be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of, of Man in the heavens. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great, uh, with power and great glory. See, He's coming back with power and great glory. So you know what the Lord's telling you? The Lord's telling you to beware. He said, I want your eyes to be open. He said, Every, everything that we do should be open in people's eyes. We should be opening people's eyes everywhere we go. We should open people's eyes if they need to testify. 
They need to they need to go out here and testify. They need to tell them about the World Trade Center and the little church is still standing. You need to tell them about the experiences that God has brought you through. What has God done for you in the last six months? What has He done for you in the last year? What is God doing for you now? How are you surviving? You know, you you got a testimony not to keep within yourself, but to give to others, to give people encouragement, to give people strength, to open their eyes. Say, you know what? There's still a God, and He still liveth, and He's still showing forth His mighty power. And God knows what He's doing. I'm gonna tell you this dream. You may think I'm crazy I'm to tell you, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. I had a dream this week, and in my dream, uh, I, I woke up. In my, it's like I just woke up in another world, and all of a sudden I seen uh, a, like a cloud of smoke. It was beautiful. Oh, it was like a, I don't know if it was smoke or a cloud or what it was, but it was beautiful. And all of a sudden, here came a line walking out. It was a, a line walking out of this cloud of smoke. And this line was not like a line that you'd ever seen before. You know, the Bible says he's the line in the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. And this line was big and beautiful. I mean, he was beautiful. He was solid white. Uh, Brother Green, and I know that Jesus is not a lie. I don't think I, but it's symbolic to Jesus. But listen, he it was it was solid white, and, and his uh, his hair that was around his head, his mane that was around his head, it was like a golden uh, blonde, glistening hair, and it was beautiful. This was the beautiful line I'd ever seen in my life. His eye was piercing, and he was so beautiful, and he came walking towards me. And uh, there were other people around me. It's like some people, church people that I knew that was around me. And my family was around me. And Chelsea was standing beside of me. And me and Chelsea was uh, there. And I said, Chelsea, look, look at that. And as we began to look at him, and closer he, the closer he got to us, the more we became looking like him. And uh, he got closer and he got closer. And I turned around.
place that we're looking like our Lord. Because Jesus said, uh, He said, Even as I have been sent, even so send I you. And the glory that the Father has given me is the same glory I have given to you. So what we got to do is we got to have our eyes open and understand that God wants us to go back. He wants us to study the law. He wants us to study the Old Testament. He wants us to study the old, the old shadow thing. But He also wants us to understand that He is the revealment of the Old, Old Testament. Church, He wants us to understand, hallelujah, that He wants our eyes open where we can open other people's eyes. If you don't ever get your eyes open, how can you lead anybody else to the Lord? So what we got to do is we got to have our eyes open. And that's what Jesus was doing in Matthew chapter 24. He was teaching them, this is what's going to happen. And He opened up their eyes of what was going on. Happen. And we find, like last week, Sister Wiggins taught on Luke chapter 24. And she told him, and I'm not going to read that chapter because she read it last week. But I love what verse 30 said. It said, And it came to pass, as he said, uh, at meat with them, he took the bread and he blessed it, he broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. You know what? You know what catches? You know what's catching to me on that? And he vanished out of her sight. Could you imagine Brother Green going and telling your brother or your family, you know what? I had supper with Jesus. Jesus came to my house. He sat down with me. And you know how I knew it was Jesus? He took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And He gave it. I knew it was Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. People going to look at you like you're a nut. And then they're going to really look at you like a nut when you say, and after we knew who He was, He disappeared. Have you ever seen anybody disappear? I don't think I have. As long as I've been living, I'm 38 years old, I've never seen nobody disappear. But the Bible says Jesus disappeared, so I believe it. i got enough sense to believe God's Word. The Bible says they knew Him. It says that they said unto them, unto one to another, Did not our heart burn with us? Why are you talking with us? Did not our heart burn within us? And then the Bible goes on and He tells them, you know, He'll be. They got up and they went back to the city. They, were, they weren't even tired anymore. They told the disciples what they had seen. We seen Jesus. He is truly risen. He is truly alive. He's, a, he's, he's alive. He's, he's really alive. And, and while they were talking, Jesus appeared. Jesus appeared. He said, peace be in and the Bible says they were afraid. They were terrified. They were terrified. They were afraid. They were afraid. Now I want to talk about some of this Sunday. We need to understand. They were afraid, but Jesus went on after, he, after all the fear got away and after it got them settled down. The Bible says, then opened he their understanding. In verse 45. Then opened he up their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. See, that's what God's intentions are. He wants us, our understanding to be open. Amen. He wants us to know that He is there for us. I was going to relate to another scripture, but I really need to go back to Matthew chapter 6. As the Holy Ghost is leading. And we need to understand His prayer open our eyes. We're about to do that. we got to get a prayer life, church. Amen. That's why the devil is defeating some of us. We're not praying enough. We're not seeking enough. we got to love praying to you. we got to love Because it's the only way your eyes are going to be open. We need to understand what Jesus said. When he was praying, he said, 
in, in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, it says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corner of the street, they may be seen to be. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou, thou prayest, enter into the closet. When thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And the Father which seeth in secret shall reward the open church. The Lord said, He said, He will reward you if you pray. Amen. Where is your reward? Do you know that sin can block you from your reward? Do you know that prayerlessness can block you from your reward? And do you know that the enemy can come against you to the place that you don't even feel like praying? Don't tell me, don't tell me that he can't because he's done me like that before. I've been beat on every side. I've been pushed down. I've been pushed out. I've been abused. I've been body slammed and everything else. But I still got up praying and seeking God. And they've been tired.
He began to preach and other people's eyes were open. God wants to open up our eyes. He says, There shall no evil be thee, neither shall any plague come down out of the way. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy way. If there's a plague come by your dwelling, I'm, not, I'm here to tell you, if I get sick, I'm down praying, Lord, what is it here? Did I pray? Did I not pray enough this week? I mean, you told me you keep this from me. I, I, don't, I don't know. If I, I, I know the research on myself. Lord, what have I done? What, if, what do I need to get right of? Or what can I learn out of this experience? What I'm trying to tell you, church, God is always doing something to open up our eyes where we can open up other people's eyes. What did He say? Well, praise Praise my name, and I'm going to put cancer on you. Praise my name, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you bird disease. Praise my name, praise my name, I'm going to, I'm going to, put, play, I'm going to put a plague on you. No, he didn't say that. He said, you'll pray to me in secret and have a personal relationship with me. He said, I will, even if this has come on you, I will deliver you. Listen to me. God said, I will deliver you. When I was born, my mother told the church, she said, this boy will preach the gospel. And whenever I was born, the church said, well, she must have missed God because he can't even talk or hear. Do you think for one minute that my mother, which I went to see today, had oh, we had good good fellowship today. I love spending time with my mother. She's a God. But for one, do you think for one minute that she questioned God? Do you think for one minute that she uh that she she thought that she wasn't gonna get her miracle? No. She said there were times she picked me up and took me to the altar and the saints was wore out tired they were ready to go home but she was ready to pray. She said at one time uh, she went to pick me up and take me up and pray for me and she heard somebody go shh. shh. And she said she looked for me and, and some of them were going around because they were ready to go home they got their miracles. They didn't have no problem. See, my mother hadn't had her miracle yet, so she kept on praying until she got it. And four years later, she got her miracle. And her miracle is still hearing, talking, preaching, teaching. Today. So, so what we have to do is go right back to that end here. we got to get here with God. But we need to understand that when we can dwell in the secret place. And he said, I will keep you from all these plagues. I will keep you from them. I will heal you. I will deliver you. I will take it away from you. So tonight we need to understand that God will, God will keep these plagues from you. He will help you. I will help you. I will give my angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. And thou shalt tread upon, upon the lion and the otter and the young lion, and the dragon shalt thou trample under the feet of the devil. You shall have the devil under your feet. The devil shouldn't be walking on your head. And if he's walking on your head, that means you ain't praying enough. And if you are praying, you ain't praying with faith. You ain't believing. Listen, church. I believe in God. We're believing God. I don't know what holds tomorrow. I don't know what holds for your tomorrow. But I do know that God's going to take care of you. Yeah, I can get up in the morning and try to fix something. Yeah. I can 
get up in the morning and kind of fix it. But whenever I try to fix it, 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 it goes into a somersault. When you try to fix your own problems, all you're doing is turning your problems upside down. It's like a somersault. But once you trust God and say, you know what, Lord, just like you, quote, just like you, Lord, knows how to hold a rope. And Lord, like you, that you can, you can take a rose and, and you know the right time to unfold that rope. How beautiful that rose is. God knows how to hold a rose. We don't understand within ourselves why it ain't blooming yet. But when it blooms, it is beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. It has all of the color that it needs. You are just what God created. That rose is just what God created. Isn't it amazing? I was going down the road today and I looked at the tree and I thought, my God, them trees depend on you, Lord. They really depend on you. The rain, we need you. The plants and the animals need you. He says, you know, the, the birds, they, they depend on God. Everything depends on God. Wouldn't it be amazing if God's people started depending on Him like His creation? It would be amazing. Boy, that would, that would be an hour. I had an event happen Sunday night. I ain't going to go into detail for that, but I had an event happen Sunday night. I had a wonderful day Sunday. Sunday morning, Sunday night. I had an event Sunday night. I had a man come in here, took all my sound system out. I thought, what am I going to do now? He said, you going to trust me? He said, go back here and dig in that bathroom back here. I went back there and I dug in that back room. This was the only part I had right here. This little old box right here. The only part I had. But I got to digging in that back room. I found a sound mixing board that uh, somebody wanted to throw away and I wouldn't let them throw it away because I thought about the eating one day. I thought, hmm, maybe I'll try that. I pulled it out, put it on the thing, worked here for almost 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, Sunday night. And something said, why don't you just go home and go to bed? I said, you know what, Lord, I think I will. I went home, I pulled that old suit off, I was sweaty, all messed up. I pulled that old uh, suit off, I took me a good salt water pad.
way to die. Right? And you know what? I pulled up just last night, Brother Darrell. Me and Brother Darrell were hanging out here for a I pulled out and I was coming up the drive and I looked over to the church. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord speak to me. He said, I'm about, I'm doing everything new. Everything new. He said, I'm doing everything new. Even if I have to send new people, I'm doing everything new. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes God said, God said, get some things out of the way. Or He can bring something new. Praise the Lord. What I'm trying to tell you tonight, we got to do like George Washington and some of our government leaders in the beginning when they founded this nation on prayer. If we want to open the eyes of God's people, we have got to be founded on prayer. That means, that means church, we need to start praying more than we talk. That means when we got a problem, uh, don't talk about your problem, pray about it. Because the more you talk about it, the worse it's going to get. Amen. <laughs> but if you're praying about it, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Praise the Lord. I know tonight, I just felt tonight, the Lord uh, wants us to pray before we go home. God wants you to be a people that open your eyes. Praise the Lord. If you want to come on up tonight, Let's pray.